Hey everybody, Corey from Aquarium Club. Today I'm at Aquarium Glazer in Germany, one of the biggest wholesalers. I was here five years ago, did a short video. Today I'm going to try to do a much longer video. Uh, I think it means a little more now that we have some people importing into America from here so the fish can actually be gotten. They've got some species I've never seen and, uh, you know, harass Dan's fish to bring stuff in. He's currently importing from them and uh, use, the use the code Aquarium Coop to get 5% off or click a link down below and we'll get a cut of that but I just want to show you a bunch of cool stuff and we'll start with what I've set up right here. So right up here is a fish uh, pseudo, let's see, pseudocrinolabus nicolosi. Very cool Victorian mouth brooder cichlid. Can go in a planted tank. They color up really, really nicely. And uh, they were nice enough to give us, or to let me use a uh, light so that I can light some of these things because without it, it's real dark. So you'll have to bear with me. This is a wholesale facility and uh, there's, you know, about 8 billion rows to go. You can see they just received 700 boxes of fish yesterday. And so they're, you know, scrambling to ship orders and do all that kind of stuff. So we couldn't visit yesterday. Had to be today. It's about uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. We left two hours ago. These guys are one of my favorites. And these are the flagtail um, porthole catfish. And this is about not quite full grown, but they don't, you know, usually you see them smaller than this in the retail stores. But I think this is a great, great fish if you have a 75 gallon or larger uh, as a bottom dwelling catfish, you know, instead of maybe Corydoras or something like that. And, uh, you know, we're just gonna keep kind of going around and looking like, oh, we got Corydoras over here. Usually the rows will have themes, like maybe, ooh, the Robinet. I love this fish, the flagtail Corydora. So I put that over, you get a more natural vibe. One of my absolute favorite Corydoras. I think they look so good. Rare in the US. Uh, it used to be I only saw them in like Japan and things like that, but yeah, when you're at Aquarium Glasser or Glazer, they've got everything. They've got thousands of tanks that import from all around the world. They've got the newest morphs. They've got, they just have everything. Even their showroom is cool. If you didn't know it, they make uh, the Aqualog book series. So a lot of the reference guides we use all around the world. Yeah, these guys, long nose Gossai is what these guys were. Pretty neat. Sodalus Sud Corys. I hate lighting them from the side. They don't look as good, but bare bottom with no lights except for up top. You know, you've only got so many options here. So, let's just walk through. This is a big water storage holding tank. Ah, and shrimp. We walked into the shrimp room. So they've got some oranges and crystals, it looks like, down here. Not gonna spend too much time in the shrimp room because I don't think this is their, necessarily their specialty. Maybe if they have, well, what are these guys? Hmm, I can't read it, Neo something. Kind of a different one. The latest and greatest Neos that we've seen uh, uh, while I've been in Germany so far would be the uh, Koi Neocardinia shrimp uh, that we, we found at Garnelio where Chris works. And uh, so you guys will see some videos on his channel about those guys, they're brand new. Some Norman Lamp Achilles. And you'll have to bear with me, between editing and walking around, there's gonna be about four billion things to see. So you never know what's around the next corner. The least killifish, this is the, the smallest live bearer. Even though they call it a killifish, it's actually Heterandria formosa. Some more shrimps. You see the ground here, it's just all drains everywhere, so water just kind of hits the ground and kind of on Guppy and Endler over here. Go back to the corridor. Whoa, look at these guys. These big beauties. 
Brocus multiradiatus. They stay nice and large. These are cool if you have some other bigger fish that you're afraid will swallow stuff, but aren't necessarily aggressive. You can see the air stones you're using. They're basically, it's a T with a weight on it. When you have this many aquariums, you don't want to service anything if you can help it. So you got the big old matin sponge, with just a little bit of flow coming out. And these, you know, they're at a right angle, so they don't flow nearly as much as like the easy flow uh, that I, you know, you can see it goes in the center there, but for the most part, it's just a right angle tube. And they can get more flow, especially if they filled it up a little more too. But, you know, it's hard to manage. You're catching fish out, you're doing all this every day. And when you're looking at thousands of tanks, that makes it difficult. So I did see some, you know, there's so much sea, but there were some tetras way up front here that I wanted to show you guys. It's gonna get louder, we're near the, the air system. But it's a new color morph, and I guess it's being bred that way in Brazil is what I'm told. And there's a, there's a yellow one and an orange one. These guys right here are the new, they're calling them the cherry tetra. But they get big, they get like, you know, two and a half, three inches. They kind of remind me of like a, a jumbo size ember tetra. It's like you crossed an ember tetra and a lemon tetra is what these guys are. And so, they, I've seen them in two places now. We saw them at Zoo Box, and now we've seen them here. And they had them in a display tank and they're absolutely amazing. And then he showed me these tetras are brand new and very popular. These guys right here. Kind of a plain fish, but I think it you know, reminds me of like a, a hockey stick tetra with a red fin. It looks great in a planted aquarium. It looks very natural if you had like a river type theme going, I think. And uh, there's the name written in cursive. So, yeah. Tripping hazards everywhere. You can see fish down in the sumps even. Got some rummy noses over here. I'm gonna have to take my hoodie off soon. It's, uh, it's about sweat 30 in here. You can see just aisle ways that go kind of down forever. So I do like tetras, but I wanna find plecos and, and cichlids and other stuff. Cause this is a lot of the, I don't call it plain stuff, but you know, if I'm gonna look at kerosens and loaches, I wanna find something that's a little bit more unique that maybe we don't see every day. If we we'll come over to this side, see what's over here. Looks like lots of garamis. Kissing garamis and angels. Some some blue pinoy. What else we got down here? Ah, some albino paradise fish. This, this fish doesn't get enough love. It, it's like a it's like keeping it in a betta, but uh, you can keep it in an unheated aquarium. Some dragon blood or, or strawberry peacocks. It's very easy to get into African cichlids when they look this good. Having those guys around. And then you've got another type of peacock. So this is all, these are all on a, all on a cara. Got that nice blue purple face and the orange. Yeah, peacock tanks, very fun. If, you ever, if you've never done them, it's worth trying sometime if you have a big aquarium. The colors you can get are, you know, basically saltwater colors. The boys get all the colors, females not so much. And they'll color up way more than this right here. These are fryer eye, they get bigger too, about six inches. Some Demasoni, these are the first cichlid I ever bred. They only get about three and a half inches or so. You, you pair those with these yellow labs, you get a nice color combo going. These aren't my favorite yellow labs. I like them when they have a lot of black on the fins. So, got some discus, looking not mighty healthy. Rows of discus. Got meds in here. You always want to see meds at a wholesaler. If you don't, then you know, oh, here we are. are they even treating them? Got Clown Loach Town here. 
Yeah, if you see meds, that way you know they actually care and they're trying to get them healthy before they ship them out. Yep, lots of loaches, lots of discus in this aisle. So they, they keep them very warm. The tanks, if you feel them, feel warm. Helps fight off illness. So when they pack fish, they use like fresh water so that if this had a high load of, of waste or uh, if it had meds in it, it won't necessarily be in the shipping. They want to control that as much as possible. Looks like maybe we came down uh, Cardinal Tetra land. And all of these will be in different stages, like when they came in, how many, how many have died. They keep kind of logs of all of it. So that you can see here, like, they had two arrive dead out of 700. So the number, those numbers are great. I love those numbers. Um, you know, kind of the same thing where they have 500 here and they had one DOA. So you, you love to see that and you love to see tracking because if you saw a big number, you wouldn't want them out of there. Most wholesalers, they just, they count what they sell, not what they brought in. This little pluckos in here. You notice they have the wood. Wood's important for hiding, but also for digestion and eating. So, kind of a tip, if you've got plecos, keep a piece of wood. It really does help, uh, you know. Ooh, what are these guys? Uh, some, some pork chop rasboras. They're using a power head with lots of flow. Ooh, discus. What else they got in here? Some bigger, lots of big discus. Wow. Is wild red tree. That's a good looking fish. Yeah. Then up here you've got uh, roms from Zingu. So these are all a type of piranha. All kept separately so they don't bite each other's fins or anything and fight. So they'll be good specimens for the stores. That's a nice extra care to see there. Whew, look at this Budokofurai. That's a big boy. And they've got a, a Platinum Gar. This isn't exactly what you guys want to see, but I think it's important to show a lot of the industry, whether we're collecting in the wild or whether they're being shipped to an importer. And then, like this is such a big wholesale facility that they ship to Dan's, and then you could order from Dan, or I could order, but I would have to order a lot of fish for it to make sense. Like, it's very expensive to ship from Germany to America. And so, you know, you're paying shipping twice, but you're getting color morphs, you get a crazy good selection here, and you get them kind of pre-quarantined. So, once Dan's done quarantining them, then they're like super robust. Same thing, if we were to order them in, they're already quarantined here, we get them, we quarantine them again. By the time they make it to someone purchasing, they're really robust. Where if we just order them straight. Yeah, here's some uh, Biodoma Cupido Wild. So these, let me put a light on them. These, I caught myself, not these exact fish, but I have these fish in my fish room. I caught myself and brought back from Peru. Great fish when they're not kind of stressed out and hiding from a camera. Got, you can see here they've got uh, peacock bass, little babies, and uh, those are captive bred. They got a heater in there, some bred Oscars. Look at these guys, some little dwarf pikes. Yeah. Some more. Uh, I don't know that fish. Oh, the focus. It sits on the ground. You see these guys? Focus. Retroclus lapidifer. It's like a earth eater, but it sits on the ground. They remind me of like the xenotilapias from Lake Tanganyika. Interesting, I didn't know those were, you know, kind of from Peru. Some more geophagus. And, uh, ooh, look at this, sturgeon. They'll swim upside down looking for food. They skim the surface. It's kind of fun. 
What do we got here? Uh oh, I gotta save this guy. Are you alive, buddy? You are alive. Don't hurt me. I only have one hand. Here you go, bud. All right. Got some yellow parrots. Some nice red parrots. A grade. Those are A grade. Those look great. Those almost look like mammon strain. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever seen a fish on the ground here. He must have been surfing too hard. Got some Geophagus balzini. So here's something I can show you. You see these nets? They only get used once, and you see they're stainless steel. And they've got a bunch of nets over here. And then they have this machine, which keeps boiling, basically boiling hot water. Very, very hot water. So that can sterilize the nets. So they basically boil the nets, they hang them to dry, and when they're in the rows catching, those all gotta get washed still. So one way to keep disease down is through that. I showed that last time I was here, but still the only place I've seen do it. Looks like we got some apistos over here. Ooh, I don't know that one. Apisto atahalupa. I wonder if they color up more or if that's as good as it gets. That I don't know. Ooh, I wonder if there's anything hidden in like the... You gotta like crawl through here because it's tight. What do you got? Pistogramma species D10. So that's where you would order from an aquarium glasser. They're gonna have everything. Whether it's colorful or not, they're like, hey, if that's new, we're bringing it in. And so you see a lot of new stuff that's never been seen. And, uh, yeah. Corium bread strain of uh, cockatoides. Benchai. I do want to get a pair of Epistogramma uh, malbrute. They're a mouth brooding Episto. These are all niece and I, both small and large. Look at the color on those. What we got towards the end here? Agazizii double reds. You can see people over there checking health. They've got specialized people that are picking and packing. You've got people looking over health. You've got people feeding. You know, an organization like this, they're very dedicated to the livelihood. Uh, they also, you know, as I said, made all the aqua log books. They've got a team upstairs taking pictures and, and just doing all of that kind of stuff around the clock. You can see he's got, he's got a flashlight. He's taking notes on fish health, if it needs meds, if it's getting better. Try to stay out of people's way here. We got here. Oh, the little chameleons. These guys were all the rage like 10 years ago. These little chameleon cats. Very cool. They hold the eggs up on their lip whiskers. Hard to breed though. You can see there's some more up here. More Robinet. So it must be on the other side of that Robinet tank. Some little twig cats. Ah, they're using the little clamps for the bags to, to sink zucchini and stuff. Smart. I was wondering why I saw those. You see people coming to the tank number to grab fish, fill in orders. They don't let a lot of people into film, but last time when you guys saw this, uh, 200,000 views, so they opened the door again. They were really busy, but they, I, it was the only time I could make it work. We drove here for a couple hours, and then now we drive uh, like another five hours to Bavaria to film another thing later tonight. So, had to get up early, 
to make our way here and then uh, so we could film. Okay, you can see another sterilizing net bin. You can also, uh, that's, this is the machine that'll bag them too. Stir by corridors, nice and healthy. Part of it is too, I wish more stores and, and wholesalers and stuff would bring fish in from Glasser just so we can get more stuff coming to America. So that's half the reason. Look at these guys. These guys are great. Haplo caps. They also come in a, a, an albino form now. But as I was saying, the more we can get companies to bring fish in from around the world, the more we'll have access to in America. So that's why I personally am enjoying buying fish from Dan's Fish and working with him because he's helping do that. I'm able to get species I haven't been able to get before. For me, it's mostly live bears. Like I haven't found where rare live bears are in here, but we're on a time limit. I can only stay here for about an hour and film. And that time goes fast. We had to talk, introduce ourselves again. And so, and then if I'm lucky, I'll have some time to get some B-roll. Ooh, look at what the meds are doing in here. This looks to be mostly all barbs back here. Some nice, like, uh, snakeskin type barbs. Yeah, all barbs. I wonder what's down there, when it was like feeder guppies or something. these guys huh I don't know that fish say that five times fast yeah I don't know that fish it's in the barb section though got mollies down low a couple big troughs of mollies Got green tiger barbs up here. Some uh, Denisoni barbs. I was tired the other day and I said to Mason I cichlids is Denisoni cichlids. So I'm sure that video I'll get called out in the comments a ton. Ooh, what's down here? Looks like we have a bunch of uh, elephant nose fish. Good, give him a lot of space, that's cool. Ooh, it's some nice, nice Congo Tetras. These are one of my favorite Tetras. They get big, but they look so good. What do we got here? Some gold rams. And then normal, normal German Blue Rams. Oh, nice, some leopard fish. I like to pair those with the Congo Tetras. They look amazing. You can do them with other oddballs like these albino Senegal Bitres. Ah, nice cool African Tetra as well. I don't like those as much, but still neat, big. Oh, I changed, no wonder. Color temperature changed, hold on. Let me let me fix that. There we go. Yeah, they look a little more natural now. So this is the natural, like, 5600 Kelvin. And as I make it more red, you see how they're more tan? And that's what I like, like, my turtle light is like this. And so if we're, if we're comparing, you know, maybe my light versus other lights, my light's a little more yellow, so it's something like this, where a lot of people might like a higher light or something, and it's gonna be way more blue. So it's gonna be, this uh, This only goes to 56K. So it might even be 10K, where you get that really blue popping. So it's just a preference thing. Got some nice electric blue rams. So this might show it off really well. The higher the number, the more blue it'll show. 
and the lower the number, the more red it'll show. So if I come down here and I turn it down, oh wait, that's intensity. See how it accentuates the red and less blue because we're down lower with the red spectrum? And then now we're in the more blue spectrum. So you can definitely play with lights. If you have red fish, you want a lower spectrum. If you want blue fish, if you want more natural colors, if you want, it's all part of the deal. And I plan to hopefully, hopefully teach you guys that a little bit because lighting, you know, we look at our aquariums because they look amazing. We want them to look amazing. There's some black rams or midnight rams. And so same light, right? Let's play with it. Do we like the red? Those fins really pop. You put the blue on, not so much. So maybe with this fish, you'd want red. See how that goes? Blue. And now red. Make those fins pop. So you got to choose what you want to do in the aquarium. If you have red plants, if you have green plants, if you have light green, dark green, like Anubius. You know, here's an albino fish, right? These guys are going to look better under red, I think. Right now we're blue. Let's turn to red. See, now they look better. Look at that eye. Like, look at that eye right there. Watch his eye. See how it turns more blue? So very, I think it's one of the most overlooked things. People buy a light on Amazon or a website based on price and how much light it puts out. Yeah, obviously you need it to be bright enough, but the color, the color is so important. See these guys, we're in blue, now we're in red. Doesn't make so much of a difference. I like the golden color a little more though. But I, I think everybody should be tuning their lights to the fish and the style of king. Look at these guys. Those look great. Again, blue. More natural red. Like this to me looks more like what they look like in the wild. As far as the wood. Watch the wood. Kind of blown out, washed out. Deeper hues. I like that. So... But, you know, this is, it's kind of like Photoshop for your fish. You can, you can set the colors and you can make them pop, just like you can on Instagram filter or something, except you want the filter on all the time in your aquarium. So that when your friends look at it, again, let's look at blue, here we've got blue. Look at the eye, what if we go red? I just think that it turns, because a lot of times they'll call these like a watermelon pleco. The color you see here is blown out. I like it to be this. This is what you see in nature. You can you can make it however you want. I'll stop talking about lighting unless I see something that really is going to make a difference. Look at these guys. These Solowazi type of hillstream loach. Those are cool. You don't see those every day. Yeah, look at that guy. Look at that big beefcake. Neat. I wonder if I wonder if they breed just as easy as the other ones, like in my 800 gallon. Ah, you can see the, the sponge filter they've got going. It's upside down at the moment. So once you ride it, it'll pump water again. Big, uh, big sponge for a lot of bio load. Look at these guys. Oh, they don't like the light. Here, let me turn it down for you. Different patterns though. Look at that one that's way back there with like the the worm line pattern. A couple of them have that, but then some don't. I wonder if that's bycatch, like different or not. These guys will look better with the blue probably because they're green. Yeah, I don't know, more of a minty now. Here they are smaller, kind of a nicer yellowy green. That guy's really fired up. Oh, nice. Some worm line. That's one thing this place always has is a lot of plecos that you just don't see. You can basically come and get any pleco you want. I mean, it's not open to the public, but I'm just saying as a shop, shopping, and a customer goes, hey, I'm looking for this. If anybody's gonna have it's gonna be aquarium glass or a glazer. If it's the right time to be importing it. You just gotta keep digging like, oh, blue eye panache. 
These guys are like seven hundred dollars. This guy usually they're real expensive. They get huge. You want to be blue or you want to be red? I just think that looks more natural. Super blue, artificial, supernatural. Ooh, look at this guy. Do you lay eggs or she lay eggs? She might have laid eggs. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just maybe it's moldy food. Goldie plecos. Lots of cannons in the water and meds. Look at this one. Look at this dude. Let's turn him blue. Yeah, I like him. That really enhances him. It's all preference though. Remember that. No one knows best. If you like it, you like it. At the end of the day, you're the one that's got to change the water and feed them. So you got to like it. Assassin snails. Ooh, some big, nice, healthy nerite snails. Ah, uh, big, big snail that eats plants. These guys are huge. Well, you see next to my finger, huge. You get like the size of your fist. So I found Chris's favorite fish that he's going to try and get some of. These are Nanostomus amaya. Super reds. And you would think, for how red these are, that they were bred this way, but they're this way in nature. Super duper red pencil fish. So, yeah, maybe maybe you can get a big group for your XXXL will, nano you know, tank. I heard that the, the problem is that the females. Yeah. The other females of the of the genus, they look very different to the males. Yeah. And I just heard the story from my friend Frank, who works here. He's yeah. a real fish expert. If I would ask about fish, I would go to him in Germany or in Europe even. And he told me the interesting thing is Oliver Locanus has been in the place, they caught some, and all of them have been red. If you catch a group of fish of 50 and all of them are red, that's interesting to know, is there no females? Or are the females the same color than the males? Let's so hope this, they're both red. They're both red. Let's hope. I mean, I'm hoping for, but I, I like this fish a lot. We saw them in the other shop in Zubox. Yeah. And I said, I want to take some. You need like 50. I need them all. I have to talk to Roma now, see what price I can get because they're still expensive. They're new. Yep. And it's very difficult. But to get you can there. help promote them. You can document. You can take pictures for them. But this is really interesting. This I like the story too that the yeah. females there are no females in the beginning because probably they hold them back. Or yep. the other thing is they put females of other species in there. Right. To prevent breeding. Mm hmm To keep the price high, but the super red side. But nice. they will grow about that size. So that's. Two inch? Yeah. Let's get some. You go talk I about those. I'm going to go find live bears. Yeah, that's your thing. I asked for help and they showed me. I'm stuck back here with the wild, the wild, you know, the wild uh, live bears, these limias, perugiae. I've got in my fish room, as you know. Got the nice blue. Uh, but it stuck me back by the Achilles, but the Achilles look amazing. Chris and I have been talking. We think killifish should be way more popular than they are. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep some because I've kept them and bred them and they're amazing. Everyone thinks they die too young, but not, only some of them are annuals. Got a, a trident, so let me a trident. It's cold back here, or the water's cold, so it's fogging up. Look at all these. This is the true nerd in me going, what's down here? Interesting. This makes for terrible footage because it's all... Ah, trout goodyids. Not the line bread version that I've got, so the less yellow. What do we got here? Some more Notho Branchius killifish. Yeah, wild live bears are kind of rare. Not a lot of people love them, but I do. Some guppy endlers. Looks like we hit endler aisle. And shrimp. So yeah, they were back by the shrimps. We skipped them originally. Gardi or, uh, Gerardus metallicus. The males get the blue, or I mean the black gonopodium and everything. You can get some more black on if you line breed them. 
Still got a few of those in the fish room, but not many. And some guppies. The guppies, I'll say, usually from a dedicated guppy farm do pretty good. What do we got here? Uh, oh, Nezaquatls. I've got these at home. These are the ones that have the sword tail that go upwards. Instead of down, it goes up like it's a saber. Ooh, Micropacilia yellow. It's kind of like, well, they look terrible from here, but cool fish. You know, it's always good to see who you're buying from. That's why I watch the videos on Dan's Fish, actually, to see uh, the fish before I buy them. So it's not just a picture. It's not just a stock photo. It's the actual fish I'm buying. So, all right, I'm headed out. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out another video. I'll put another one here, and uh, we'll see you next time. I enjoy traveling the world. Hopefully you enjoy watching me experience this, and you learn a little bit. Maybe you learned a little bit about lighting. Let's see. Corian on blue. Wait, that's, that's brightness. Corian blue. Corian red.